Our next speaker is project manager at Tramosoft, where he uses the unique understanding of both the ambulance industry and integrated command software to bridge the gap between the two. A member of the Tramosoft team since its inception, he's managed all the products, design, and training, as well as software implementation and development for the company. Uh, please welcome Sean Ostrom. Morning. Morning. I want to uh, thank Jake for taking my speech, <laughs> but I'll go ahead and expand on uh, what Jake has given you guys as far as the black box. Um, at Traumasoft, as you guys all know, is a integrated solution for everything that we do, whether it's HR, GPS, CAD, fleet, doesn't matter. Um, we've taken all this information combined it, put it into one site for all you guys to have. Uh, one of those things that we're expanding on right now is the actual GPS side of things. Taking that information from that black box and then using it and giving you guys some uh, cool information. Some of the stuff that I'll, I'll touch base today on, on the GPS side uh, is geofences and how we can create many of those. Um, something we call georegions is taking all those geofences and combining them together. Uh, to create some post planning, uh, some alerting, minimum number of vehicles, uh, speed, mileage uh, in real time, and the advantages of having all this stuff in one uh, in one solution for, as part of trauma as part of trauma stuff. Integration of the Feeny modem or the ASTEC modem, whatever modem that you're using in the actual truck uh, that gives us that long lap and the information uh, from the vehicle. Um, the advantage, some of the other advantages of having all that information is AutoCAD, time stamping, um, the ability to take that, that long lot of a truck as it goes into a call and then be able to create radiuses around the pickup, the drop off, um, and then be able to do the time stamping automatically as trucks enter zones, leave zones, go on route, whatever the case may be. Uh, and then the routing technology. Since we know all this information, we also have the ability to tell you what the closest truck is to a call based off that long line and how long it's going to take for them to get there, whether they're in service, they're not in service, um, they got patients on board, um, if they're passing pickups that are going the same way, we can make sure that we can pick them up uh, through capacity of our vehicles um, and create some more efficiencies. So geofences, um, I got a little snapshot here of what the actual uh, CAD screen looks like. Um, so you can see our vehicles up on the map, and then we got these red lines go around, which are geofences. We have a little bit unique geofences that gives you the ability to create geofences that are actual geofences. Um, they're very easy to set up. You literally zoom in on a map, left click, and then you start left clicking some more around your radius, whatever it may be. If you want to use circles, you can use circles. If you want to use squares, you can use squares. Um, but you do have actually have the ability to make the geofence exactly the way that your coverage area is. From there, you have the ability to um, give it some alerting, whether you want to be notified when a truck leaves or enters a geofence. And you can also say what the minimum number of vehicles would be inside of that geofence. Once you have all your geofences set up, you then have the ability to create georegions. These georegions are used to take many of your geofences, combine them into one uh, for post planning, contract obligations, uh, whatever it is that you need to do. That will also give you the ability as a dispatcher um, to see some visual representations of uh, what you may or may not need to do depending on what your fleet's doing. So um, if you say that a, a bunch of geofences, two or three of them, combine them into a geo-region um, and say you need to put three or four trucks within that geo-region, if you dip below that, um, whether they're on a call or they actually leave the geofence, uh, the system will, uh, will allow you flash colors on the screen so the dispatcher can be visually aware that they need to do some truck movement or get some crews on um, or whatever the case will be for you guys uh, how you handle that. 
Um, the AutoCAD, um, just to go through it, it's, it's integrated directly with your CAD system. Um, you dispatch a call out, your crews now have the ability through the trucks, um, if you have the modems in there, to uh, acknowledge the actual call. Once the crew acknowledges the call, you have the ability, or the AutoCAD will kick in. It will draw automatically a radius around the truck, the pickup, and the drop off. And then as that truck starts moving forward, it will start doing the timestamps as it does its algorithm to determine where it is in the truck. Uh, some of the things that factor into the actual auto timestamping is uh, radius around, uh, which I had mentioned, and then two other factors, one being speed and the other one being time. If all three of those come into play, it will automatically change the timestamp on the on the actual dispatcher's end. Um, and at the end of the call, our crews now have the ability to see the timestamps. Um, they don't have to call our dispatch center anymore to get the times. They have all that information right there in front of them. Um, and both the dispatcher and the crew didn't have to actually do the timestamping. So there's a lot of advantages that we're getting with, uh, with these black boxes that attach these modems. Um, and those are just some of those. Uh, this is an example of, of a geo region um, that has or that needs vehicles to be put in its, in its zone, whether you have to uh, move your fleet, rotate it, whatever it is, bring more crews in. So you can see that I have <coughs> three geo fences there. Two of those are been combined into one <coughs> geo region. Um, and we can see that we have a truck that's moving that way. Um, so now you'll see the visual representation, big red, flashy, lets the dispatcher know that they need to do something. Some of the other things that we're working on as far as the, the post planning side of things is, is where your truck is, even if it's inside the geofence or the geo region, or even if it's outside of that geofence or geo region. Do you have uh, the ability from where your, your fleet is sitting at, at any given time to meet a contract <coughs> obligation? even though they're not in the actual deal fence. Um, so it'll take, it'll take those things into consideration too. Over on the left hand side with these black bubbles that we have, um, these are alerts uh, that'll flash up either on the screen, stay on the screen, or not, or come off the screen depending on how you set up your configuration. So red meaning bad, green meaning good um, per your deal fence or your geo region there. Uh, some of the other information that we're taking from that black box to bring into um, the CAD, uh, like Jake had said, is the, is the fleet side of things. Uh, battery lights are on, sirens are on. Uh, all this information that we can get from the truck, we can also put on the GPS. Uh, so when a truck is actually going down the road, they've got their lights and sirens on. The, the icon that you can see, uh, the gray one would turn, change to a different color depending on what you put on it. Um, so that dispatchers or whoever is looking at the actual map would realize that they're on a call, whatever it be, ALS, BOS, emergency, not emergency. Um, so a lot of visual color representation that you'll be able to um, have configurable so that you can visually manage your, your fleet uh, and your ambulance and your rotations for them. The biggest thing that we're trying to do over at, at Trauma Software, if it's, if it's GPS or any of our modules, is to get you guys streamlined information and improve efficiencies on everything that we do uh, within the business. So um, that's all I got for you on GPS. I want to leave it open to questions because there's probably going to be a lot of them with GPS. Uh, so if you guys got any questions, that'd be great. My question is on for the GPS, Sean. Um, you're talking about the AutoCAD and the timestamping. Is it going to be dependent on us having a real-time um, modem like they were talking about the Ferno, what they had offered for that? Because our modem, for example, now pings every two or three minutes. So if that data is only collecting every two or three minutes, but we have some contractual obligations where 
you know, you have to be at a facility within six minutes, and if you're off the mark by three minutes, that may not do that. So, would that would your system require that real time time stamp included? Yeah, well, the basis of, of the CAD being able to um, time stamp itself is, is the broadcast of a long lag. Um, it would have to do it pretty frequently. A lot of the ones that we've been working with, you have the, the ability to hop in there and give them a configurable setting, whether it's 100 feet, uh, you know, seconds, whatever the case may be there. Uh, so to get that real-time information in the, in the timestamp to be right, we, we would need, or the modem would be able to have the ability to set it at a pretty low frequency uh, as far as time or mileage goes. Do you have the, the ability to control is there a login interface and you can go in and, and configure those things or is it just a closed system and it just broadcasts? Uh, I think that you can go, I, I think it's just a matter of pricing. You know, you just bring out things every two or three minutes, but if you want a real time thing every minute or less, you can just up the, ramp up the system. Gotcha. <clears throat> Sean, this is way outside my expertise, but don't you have, don't, isn't there a difference now the way you guys are getting the vehicle movement information versus the, the normal GPS? Um, I, you know, I, it refreshes all the time as opposed to, I, I don't even understand. Yeah, we've got uh, some new technology that, that we've put in place um, that we use in, in a lot of the other modules, communication system. But um, before, in, in browsers, um, in order to get updated information, you had to get a refresh of the page, a reload of the page. Uh, the new technology that we've been putting in and implementing does not al uh, allow for uh, you have to refresh your page. When the information from a truck is pushed, it's instantly updated in the browser without physically having to re reload the page. Um, it's just a communication system that we've put in so that browsers, uh, dispatchers, when they're sitting up, have the ability to update their browser here, uh, and then all the other dispatchers get the same information instantly. So um, it's new technology that we put in place that allows for that. Yes. Wouldn't that affect his price, though? Wouldn't it be able to maintain his lower price point while also getting updating the more frequently? Um. Yeah. It, the, the auto time saving side of it really relies on the longing lap being pushed more frequently than than you know minutes um, could you do it by minutes yes you could um, but you're still we're still only bound by the information that we get once we get it and we can communicate that so if it's a, if it's a minute long two minutes long whatever the setting is um, that, that would probably would be a great use for for autocad uh, for the time zone side but if you had the ability to lower it then yes it would, it's, it's a great solution Correct me if I'm wrong, but ultimately his problem is that he's refreshing the entire screen, which requires more bandwidth. Aren't, isn't the system that you're talking about refreshing, a, isn't it a smaller bit of information, which wouldn't require as much uh, bandwidth also? Yeah. Or, or as much frequency. It's telling it when to broadcast it as opposed to just reaching out and saying, hey, where are you? It's sending it to him saying, hey, I need to update this now. <coughs> what I was questioning is, are the information that's being pushed out of the truck going to the system where Sean's talking about, it can capture the data on the computer as often as it's being pinged out by the truck right. and refreshing on that end. It's just, I didn't know if, if, we're, if we've only got a two or three ping rate on our truck, if we have to decrease it down to ping it every 30 seconds or whatever to be able to send it to the screen so it can refresh on their end. So the solution that you're using is actually controlling that. If they were storing the information on the modem, then yes. Uh, it kind of sounds like the way that they've got their pricing structured is you're paying for X amount of time to get put that information out and it's only doing what it had at the time. Or yeah. Is it actually storing it in seconds and then it takes a compiled amount of information and pushes it every five minutes? Yeah. I, I, I just know ours does it every two minutes. It refreshes all the trucks every two minutes and pushes it out. Or using an outside or, you know, a local service for that GPS. Oh, you're actually
actually talking about the mapping side of it. Right. I got you. Um, the, I, I was more referring to the modem itself. So, do you, you have the if you have the ability to physically log into the modem and set parameters yourself? That would just be a conversation with the with the mobile company. I know that Sierra Wireless is that we work with have a very programmable interface where you can go in and actually set those values. Um, at at Pride, we have um, trucks set for every five seconds, so we get a long line every five seconds. Um, so that's something that we get to control. Data storage on, on our end is data storage is very minimal. Uh, we'll keep up to a whole year's worth of uh, of long lines for history purposes before we archive. So. Uh, even if you want like one second uh, information, it is no bearing on as far as the storage goes. But if you do have the ability to log into your modem and set up where it gets pushed out to, then you could use the AutoCAD, the AutoCAD very efficiently. Uh, you could just display it up on the, the page that you have, and you wouldn't need to use the actual service that you have now. Any other questions? Yeah, you were talking about the geofencing and the ease of creating them. Can you create them on the fly? If, if I get a new contract or if I've got a crew going to a facility that wasn't already in our CAD, can I go in and create that geofence right then and there? Yeah, the geo, the, the setup of it is, is an accessible link to dispatch or to supervisor. So you could very simply and quickly go to it if you have a new facility, set it up, put one around it, and then be done with it, and it would just merge back in. And can you talk in a little bit more detail about the integration with the CAD and how the crew can receive the, the information and then it automatically updates everything? Does that basically take the dispatcher out other than assigning a call? Uh, for the most part, yes. Um, you need the dispatcher to actually assign a call to the truck. Um, there's a connection piece that goes along with the scheduling application for those that are using the scheduling. Um, the daily worksheet that those schedulers and dispatch use, you have the ability to assign a truck to um, the actual shift profile itself. So the CAD um, looks into that just to make sure that those requirements are met. And then once a dispatcher assigns a uh, call to the truck, it knows where to send the information. And then on the employee's end, they have a, uh, the ability to see their list of calls, uh, whether it's present um, or trips that they have in the future. Um, and then once they acknowledge it, it would start. Um, there's also uh, an override feature for dispatch. So uh, if the dispatcher or the crew feel that the auto stamping is wrong, um, you have advanced to an next time stamp and they knew they weren't there, they always have the ability to go back to a previous time stamp. Uh, and then the auto time stamping would turn off. And then when they actually got to the actual scene, they could then progress it back forward and auto had would turn back on. So that's just the automated side. There's always the manual side too, where the dispatcher can just physically go in um, and advance timestamps just like we are now. So you get to do it both ways depending on if you have that mode or that capability in your truck. Any other questions? Um, we're here till the end of the day for those that have any additional questions as far as um, GPS goes or any of the modules you may or may not be using um, down at the booth. Uh, Mike is going down there to uh, answer your guys' questions. Um, outside of that, thanks a lot.